in the afternoon itself so that they can be free at their home to listen <laughs> all right <laughs> if it is more than 6 they'll panic not to sit back i know i know I think we'll start and let them join. Okay. Sure. Uh, today is a great day for me. It's my honor, great honor and privilege, to invite my friend, uh, Mr. Ravi Chandran Somu. He is head of Asia Pacific Technical Support and Professional Services, Keysight Technologies, a U.S.-based multinational company. currently he is working in singapore he has uh, one son and one daughter with his loving wife called geeta his uh, daughter is a doctor to be and his son is going to study in us and uh, uh, ravi chandran somu he is from village called vetikadu near tanjore tanjore Ravi Chandran Somu is head of Asia Pacific Technical Support and Professional Services Organization of Network Applications and Security Group at Keysight Technologies. Ravi is a telecommunication and networking industry executive with over 25 years of experience in various technology management positions such as solutions and architecture. test engineering and technical support he started his telecom career at cdot center for development of telematics a premier research and development institution of government of india and later he worked in bell industries usa while working in lucent technologies he has worked in india usa and singapore and traveled widely around the world to provide technical solutions for major telecommunication operators ravi is my friend holding b degree in electronics and communication from college of engineering gindi anna university in 1989 and uh, mba from university of uh, south australia he has won many awards for his professional and academic excellence he was a state rank holder and awarded with national merit scholarship by government of india Ravi is a technology executive, author, speaker, and traveler. He is the founder and president of Keysight Technologies, Singapore Corporate Toastmaster Club. He is the co-founder of Padai, a social organization supporting poor children, rural, educational, and environmental projects in India, and also. one of the founder directors of aims india a social organization based in usa uh, ravi is a us citizen and a permanent resident of uh, singapore and likely to switch over to teaching profession after his retirement is that correct ravi that's pretty much true okay. correct <laughs> okay okay thank you and it gives me immense pleasure in welcoming all the participants all my faculty members all my professor friends uh, to this webinar today in the evening have a good evening and uh, this webinar is on 5g technology which is going to drive the global growth exponentially i hope 
all of you will have an engaging and enriching session today and uh, i i take privilege to introduce my friends here and my faculty sure. i think uh, mrs i invited mrs asha from iaft udupuram she is placement and dean she is dr asha and i have here dr sorama devi associate professor of electronics branch i think instrumentation in anna university trichy and i have invited dr sumati uh, associate professor in computer engineering minakshi uh, minakshi college at madurai and i have invited uh, my uh, my own sister dr manjula and his and her husband uh, dr kalapati rajshekaran and uh, i have invited uh, dr famina dr vimal jaral he is hosting our event now and uh, not but not the least my arms and limbs of government polytechnic college kanyalampati karur and government polytechnic college srirangam they are my pillars and i would like to invite all of them today on this wonderful webinar on 5g network and services and before that today is dr apj abdul kalam's fifth remembrance day on this day as a teacher let us give a tribute oath to him and i would like to have a 10 point oath and dear participants professors and lecturers please listen and if possible you can also join me when reading this oath first and foremost i will love teaching teaching will be my soul teaching will be my life's mission i realize by being a teacher i am making an important contribution to the efforts of national development i realize that i am responsible for shaping not just students but the ignited youth who are the most powerful resource of the earth i will consider myself to be a great teacher only when i am capable of elevating the average student to the high performance performer and when no student is left out as a non performer i will organize and conduct my life in such a way that my life itself is a message for my students i will encourage my students to ask questions to seek answers in order to develop the spirit of enquiry and they blossom into creative enlightened citizens i will treat all the students equally and will not support any differentiation on account of religion community or language i will continuously build my own capacities in teaching so that i can impart quality education to my fellow students i will constantly endeavor to fill my mind with great thoughts and spread the nobility in thinking and action among my students i will always celebrate the success of my students thank you and over to mr ravino my friend please robert am i audible okay. yes sir very much okay good okay good அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் குட் ஈவினிங் எவ்ரி ஒன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஐ லைக் டு தேங்க் மை ஃப்ரெண்ட் அண்ட் மேடம் பிரின்சிபல் மேடம் தேன்மொழி ஃபார் கிவிங் திஸ் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி டு ஸ்பெண்ட் திஸ் ஈவினிங் வித் யூ டிஸ்கசிங் அபவுட் ஃபைவ் ஜி டெக்னாலஜிஸ் ஆர் த டெக்னாலஜிஸ் ட்ரெண்ட்ஸ் யூ மே ஒண்டர் வாய் ஐ ஸ்டார்ட் அட் மை கிரீட்டிங் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இன் தமிழ் 
then i switch to english the reason is whenever i talk give a talk in english or seminars uh, guest lectures in in tamil nadu or address a tamil tamil audience i always greet in tamil first because that's my respect for uh, my mother tongue right that's uh, that's what i do and another reason i noticed here some students also joined this uh, uh, conference so i i would like to remind them and tell them that please feel free to talk questions in tamil okay so there is a myth in india there is a real myth in india if somebody talks a very good english he is considered as a very knowledgeable person that is not true at all that is not true at all english is just a language it's not the knowledge okay so please remind that remember that english is just a language it is not the language uh, knowledge so please please free to ask in tamil i will also answer the questions in tamil so uh, then uh, clear are clear or audio la clear are clear yes sir yes sir very much okay, okay very good okay let me continue all right so uh, when uh, tenmuli madam tenmuli approached me first uh, for this talk i said without any hesitations i said immediately yes there are two reasons for that one is tenmuli is my good friend my college mate okay so i know her very well second i am going to talk to the professors and the teachers and lecturers right because teaching is a noble profession teaching is a noble profession that is why mata pita guru devam that i don't need to repeat everybody knows that right so um, this gives an, an opportunity for me to interact with the teaching uh, uh, the, the the faculty and because you shape the future engineers you shape the future technologists you shape the future entrepreneurs the future leaders of the country right so it is a simple uh, way of for me to interact with you sharing little bit knowledge which i gained in this industry okay that's a main reason uh, before jumping into the next uh, um, uh, getting into the um, 5g i would like to also mention one thing here i would like to thank my guru dr sam petroda who is the father of indian telecommunications uh, i'm sure most of you heard about dr sam petroda dr sam petroda when he started he was a us citizen he came to india to start center for development of telematics in 1984 under the guidance of uh, late prime minister indira gandhi later by prime minister rajiv gandhi when dr uh, sam petroda started c dot in india 1984 indian tele density was only 0.68 that means for every 100 people we had only 0.68 telephone not even a single telephone at the time people who uh, my generation right our generation know that when somebody has a telephone in their home they are considered as a very rich person or a big officer right from there now our tele density is more than 100% that means every home we have multiple telephones even people have two cell phones one for personal one for business and our technology right now beat on reliance jio beat on airtel we are on par or in terms even ahead of certain western countries so the whole credit goes to dr sam petroda and i am so fortunate as a young engineer at the age of 22 years i met dr sam petroda in delhi when i was doing a project and that's where i got inspired by this great man then he told me about c dot i joined c dot oh, i am i am a telecom engineer today it's just because of dr sam petroda okay so with that prelude i would like to jump into the straight away into the uh, the technology the 5g technology discussions okay all right so i want to check uh, can you see my screen uh in full screen mode yes sir okay yeah okay okay good audio also very good right so yeah. if there is any problem please let me know okay because i am just talking looking at the screen i am talking if i am going too fast or if i'm you know something audio quality or anything please let me know all right okay good let's move forward uh one more thing i would like to make this as a more of a discussions not like a one way kind of information right because uh, 
I periodically I'll pass here and there, and I'll ask for anybody has any questions or anything. Uh, then maybe we can at the end also we have a dedicated uh, question and answer session where I can answer all your questions. Uh, again, I'm not an expert to answer everything. 5G is a very vast technology, right? Katradu kai manalavu, kallaladu ulagalavu. Okay. So whatever I I know, I will answer. At the same time, I can talk about the technology trends like internet security or cloud computing or robotics or artificial intelligence because I interact with the various uh, industry experts. So whatever I know, I can share with you. So please free to ask any questions. Okay, thank you. So let's move forward. So to, this is the uh, agenda, this is the guideline for uh, today's uh, uh, talk. Okay, so what I'm going to talk is first to start about for I know that a lot of people in this, uh, a lot of professors uh, and some students also join. Uh, they are not from the telecom background. They are from different background. It is always important to know that we should have a strong foundation, right? You should have some basic foundation. Then only you can build, you know, build a strong uh, you know, building on top of it. So I would like to touch upon something about the evolution of mobile communication. Then what is 5G? Why we need 5G? What is 5G architecture? what is 5C services and future lifestyle of like you know, our lifestyle and the finally end up with the technology discussions and question and answers. Um, so let me start. Okay, so this is a, again, and this, uh, this uh, is a very famous slide which I always use during my uh, technology discussions. If you look at the, the telecom industry Every 10 years, the telecom industry goes through a major, major technological revolution. That's why called we generation, right? First generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation, okay? If you look at the mobile telecom industry, I'll ask you a question, right? Okay, maybe before. Can anybody say now, I can live without a phone? No, nobody can say, okay? Nobody can say because now phone is considered our second brain okay and third arm okay people everybody always just we hold our phone on, on our hand or like you no know, we look at for everything so the the mobile has become a part of our life right so but not way back in 50 years back okay in 1981 the first 5g technology was 1g technology was introduced in the 80s okay 80s so you might have seen the size of the phone that is based on analog communication. I'm sure a lot of you all know that there is a difference between analog communications and digital communication. So that's based on analog communication. That means you can only talk. That's it. Nothing else. You can't do anything else, right? It's analog communication. And that phone used to cost about you know, 5 lakhs rupees or something like that, right? At the time, it's very expensive phone, expensive technology. Okay, good. In the 90s, then we moved from analog to digital, right? That's called second generation technology. When we moved to digital, then we could add on top of voice, we call it as a value added services. What is value added services? Something like a text message, SMS, text messages, or call, call waiting, like no, no so call, uh, what is that? Uh, call, uh, caller ID, like when somebody calls you, see their name. Uh, and uh, voicemail, those are the things we call it as a value added services. So we could provide value added services with the 2G technology. <laughs> okay, then after 10 years in the 2000, so then we move to the next technology called 3G. 3G, okay, uh, I'll just go to the next slide that will clear, clear the picture here. You can see a clear picture here, 1G, 2G. In 3G, so first time it was introduced the data. Right. Previously, only for voice. In 3G, we introduced a data traffic. So that means in 3G, <clears throat> you can have simple emails. You can have voice emails apart from voice calls or the value-added services, and you can do simple web browsing because the speed is very low. Probably around uh, you know uh, 240 you know BPS and kind of thing. So that is what <clears throat> it, it happened in 3G. Then <clears throat> in uh, 2011 onwards. The next 10 years, the 4G came. That is what we could see videos, right? All the YouTubes and the videos, uh, uh, you know, internet and everything. That's what it's a complete, totally different world. In 4G, we did one more thing also in 4G. 
<clears throat> what happened is i don't know people who are familiar with the telecom they can understand that in 3g what we had is we had a separate network for carrying voice traffic right voice traffic whatever we speak it goes in a separate network whatever the data traffic like the emails or the like you no know, browsing or something it goes the different traffic different network two different network for a telecom every like you know, whether it is a bsnl or whether it is reliance they used to have two different network um, so but what we did is in 4g we combined everything into a single network that's called we call it as a core network it's called using voice over ip technology you know voice over ip technology so that means we made the network more efficient how it is efficient you may ask let me explain with a simple example for example when you speak when you make a call to from chennai to delhi if you speak it travels through the road assume that it travels through the road right when you send a email it goes through the rail network assume that it goes through the rail network you see two different paths one is for email communication one is for a voice communication so you have two different networks when you have two different networks you need lot of money to build two different infrastructure you need lot of money to operating expenses so but when you make it as a single network right single network which rail network is alone sufficient to carry your voice traffic your internet traffic it becomes more efficient less expensive so that is what we did in 4g so what we did is we converted the analog to you no know, uh, voice over ip thing, you know, thing so that's why the 4g becomes more efficient so that is how the evolution you can see 1g 2g 3g 4g in every 10 years we made a technology leap to the next level next level now we are at 5g 2020 so 5g okay these like as you know that um, i'm an engineer right and obviously everybody we are all engineers when you start any project you need to read the what is the purpose of the project what is the requirements the first thing we do is the requirement define the requirements of the project okay so for 5g the whole telecom industry the whole engineers they had a bigger vision they had a bigger vision so what is that's what they come up with after you know you know you know that people who are familiar we have so many standard itu standard ansi standard rfc standard they come up with the different standards they come up with hey this is going to be our dream network 5g so we need these features what is that this can be categorized into three different major buckets one is the enhanced mobile broadband right nowadays you see like no we are we are i'm sitting here i'm talking to you in you no know, different parts of the world right uh, like you no know, and it is possible through video right but in 5g even more it's going to be better with the uh, ultra high definition video right not regular video ultra high definition video that is what something like augmented reality i'm going to talk about later so that is what we call it as a enhanced mobile broadband right now higher speed enhanced mobile broadband what is higher speed if you look at 4g the maximum speed in 4g 1 uh, gigabits but gbps right gigabits per second but reality that's a theoretical speed but reality when you when you use your 4g phone right now you get 40 mbps roughly around 40 to 50 mbps so if you are lucky you may get 100 mbps in certain areas that's it but in 5g the peak is 20 gbps you see 20 times higher right but average it's going to be 1 gigabits per second right that means you can download one the entire movie in one second okay you want to download a movie you can download it one second 800 mb movie right so even when you are traveling even when you are traveling in a train high speed train uh, in a bus still your speed is going to be 1 gigabits per second right that's what you are going to see the enhanced mobile broadband the second until 4g until 4g the mobile the 4g network was designed only for mobile phone only right only for mobile phone your broadband your youtube videos your phone calls your zoom meetings or whatever it is but 5g is a different ball game 5g is a different ball game what is it we are going to use 5g for iot connectivity i'm sure people you know about iot stands for internet of things what is iot now we have so many devices look at i'm wearing a my my tracker like how many steps i walk how many things i do how many, when i run everything is tracked 
this is an iot device it is connected through 4g like you no know, uh, when i run it is connected to the 4g like you know in the future it can be 5g similarly every devices like in a household your fridge is iot device you are uh, like you no know, there are so many devices are iot devices and in the future we are going to have um, iot devices placed in every nook and corner of the country nook and corner of the world to detect the storms you detect your agriculture uh, thing or you, you know Uh, flared and everything right so these are all going to connect it through uh, uh, the 5g network that is why we call it as a massive iot so this is a completely new to you uh, know in 5g another things we call it as ultra reliable low latency that means you can't afford to have any latency no delay at all it has to be you do something within fraction of second it has to happen why we are going to do the doctors are going to use for remote surgery like you no know, doctor sitting in new york can do a surgery of a patient in tanjore right or in chennai okay that is possible okay that is what or in a remote location vetikad village right somebody can doctor can treat in a vetikad village so those things are possible then we are going to use uh, robots to go to the fire fighting we are not going to send the human so we need to control in a fraction of second those things are called ultra reliable low latency so those is another these are the ultra reliable low latency devices massive iots are the other thing uh one thing i'm going to share this slides with you no worries you can i can share with the tanmali uh, uh, madam and she can forward to you need not to write or anything so you can just focus on the talk need not even take a screenshot or anything you no know, i can share with you all right so these are the various key factors i don't want to read everything so the high speed and that's called low latency less than 1 millisecond and it is it has the network has to provide the connectivity massive connectivity and density means for example if there is a cricket match right if you are a cricket match and you are like you know 100000 people in eden garden stadium are going to sit and watch a game everybody is going to use a cell phone everybody has to have a device connected multiple devices and we should be in a position to handle that much capacity right that much capacity in a very very small uh, uh, area so those things are possible in 5g and network efficiency what you are looking at is we want to optimize the cost we want to bring the cost down we want to that's why now reliance jio can offer like you no know, 400 rupees or whatever it is i don't know right no, the the broadband uh, thing because of the cost reduction we have to make the efficiency and we made to make to make the green energy you know energy efficient so those are the various factors various things of a 5g requirements so we engineers we technologists we research scientists we are all working day and night hard to make this happen in the future right uh, in fact um, uh, i am i am leading my team uh, i am i am i am fortunate enough to be part of the first 5g deployment in tokyo for 2020 olympics my team is actively involved my i have a team 40 member team in japan they are actively working on this project and my team is uh, involved in um, uh, seoul for a deployment my team is involved in uh, china mobile in uh, in china so everywhere we very actively working on it uh, and i'm so fortunate to work on in the last 25 years of my industry uh, so many uh, interesting project including um, indian telecom industry project so um so i can share later when you know this experiences so that's what the key 5g features this is what we are working this is what we are going to make it happen in 5 5 years because the the, the deployment started now in after 5 years 2025 the deployment will be completed all over the world 2025 in india you'll have i'm sure reliance will be the first one to you know in offer 5g so you'll have 5g it is a real it is a real right it is not in the paper or anything like that okay um this is uh, maybe here after us i go a little bit in the technical but i'm want to i'm not going to the talk too much but i like to high level so if okay so if you look at what is 5g architecture means we divide the architecture i'm sure people who are familiar with the osi model open stand uh, no uh, in the standard model which says seven layers of networking right from layer 1 to layer 7 right you see um, data data layer um, uh, no the no the uh, network layer application transport and the, the seven layers okay so what we are trying to do is we are going to make the network very simple in 5g just a three layers one is the connectivity layer that's called layer 1 what is connectivity layer 
your antennas right when you are cell phone your antennas or when you carry the fiber optic cable when the fiber optic cable will transfer billions of bytes of data from one place to another place okay whatever we are speaking it's all travel through you know in, in in through the fiber optic cable submarine cables and everywhere it is reaching you uh, and uh, ethernet cables and stuff like that that's called the layer one the, the physical layer or the layer one connectivity then the middle where platform so that is what we all the network functions like you know network layers uh, or like you no know, mme or various network elements of like you know uh, hlr home location register the various network elements in previously we used to have different different boxes right for network element now we are making it as a cloud computing based on the you no know, cloud computing virtualized platform and that is we are calling it as a network as a service so that is what we can make it very efficiency that's a middle level in the upper level is the applications like all the like iot devices are connected right in the, your mobile broadband and uh, uh, and your uh, no augmented uh, virtual reality those things are on the application at the top layer this is what it is going to be a simple three layer architecture like like you no know, the physical layer the lower layer and the enabling platform at the middleware layer and the real applications which we use uses like you no know, we don't know about what is happening uh, and at the lower levels but we know what is we are using zoom is an application we are using uh, like you no know, iot device an application so those things okay i'm just checking my time okay <clears throat> so what i'm seeing is uh, um so i'm just going a little bit on the 5g because um, uh, no the, if you look at the 5g you all know that spectrum right people know about what is spectrum and i'm not going to spend um, much on this um, which layer of the 5g spectrum we are going like no we know uh, no the gigahertz spectrum and uh, some unused spectrum and stuff like that this is for your information i captured it and your further information i am not a um, i'm not an expert in the antenna side i am an expert in the core network like you know the routers all the you know how the back end connectivity how the switching happenings so i am not to be the much expert in talk in detail but for the sake of information i'm provided what is the different spectrum like you know you know about uh, like you know which area we are using it so this is the 5g spectrum we are using it okay so another thing is uh, i would like to share is uh, because the antennas how the antennas have evolved over a period of time when i talked about 1g you have a single antenna right you you may have seen big antennas in some buildings like when you are during the 2g days uh, high rise buildings and stuff like that that is a primitive old technology antennas that is connected to again coaxial cables and stuff like that then we when we move to 3g uh, and the 4g you might have seen the antenna size has become smaller even if you look at the buildings right even when you travel you may not see the bigger antennas you okay, can see the small antennas so what we call it is a mimo technology mimo stands for multi input multi output that means when you want to have a high speed you have to have multiple beams like you no know, coming from your uh, cell phone to the con the connectivity from your cell phone to the antenna tower so that we can combine multiple you no know, transmission of the bytes and combine and make it as a that's why the speed becomes much faster right you get a higher speed higher throughput that's called multi input uh, can you make not me make as a co host because i'm keep getting um, admit admit messages which is disturbing my screen okay you can stop me as a co host okay thank you so um, so that is what uh, mimo technology so what we have done in the 4g and uh, like you know the 4g what we did is called as a fd mimo fd means full dimensional right because upper beam lower beam side beam like you no know, like a 360 degree view so that is why when you have 360 degree view you can have a better coverage this are all the improvement antenna I'm, I'm, as i said no I, these are all bigger topics i'm just giving a high level picture i don't want i know we don't have time to go in deep dive discussions on this so but at least you can understand hey what is mimo what is fd stands for fd means full dimensional like a 360 in in 5g we call it as a massive multi uh, no mimo technology that means in single antenna you'll have multiple antennas you know multiple things your or 5g phone will have multi you may not see it it will have multiple antennas like you no know, things uh, embedded in your phone that way it communicate then only because of that only you will get a 1 gbps or 10 gbps speed in the in the in the thing right 
so this is how the antenna has evolved so again i would like to spend some time here okay the reason is if you look at uh, the current world even in india even in some countries 2g is still available okay 2g is still available 3g 4g bsnl i'm sure i was talking to our friend tilagavadi she was telling 2g is still there in um, in in uh, bsnl the reason is all the telecom operators they spent billions of dollars in building these networks like 2g 3g 4g so you cannot go and say that hey we have a new technology kick the all this throw all this equipment put 4g nobody has the money to do that right so you need to that is why we need to give the evolution of technology how we can coexist all the technology can coexist 2g is still a very powerful medium for voice calls like you no know, i feel because i am a i am a circuit tdm engineer i i started my career as a circuit tdm technology like you no know, uh, on the not on the digital on the tdm technologies i find till you know, 64 kbps tdm is pretty solid right compared to voice or ip so it is pretty good for voice calls right so people who want to use we can use it and 3g and 4g so what is happening is when we in the current world we see all the three technologies are available you see 2g 3g 4g and we know how to like you no know, based on the requirements that's the job of our telecom engineers when we build a network how to use uh, for which traffic to use 4g which traffic to use 3g we have some policy decisions we 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 know how to manipulate in the backend like we call it as this backend core network we can do how, what kind of things in the core core network then you have something like a fixed telephone you still people have fixed telephone in the home right you have your uh, bsnl phones in your home okay and you have broadband connectivity also home which is not through the 4g or 5g you see multiple networks right so what will happen for for example if you take bsnl which has all the technology it takes so much money and manpower to maintain multiple networks 2g networks even if there is something wrong you have to get the you know, replacement equipment 3g 4g 5g you no know, 4g so how we are going to do that so you have multiple cellular networks in the future 5g boom everything is a single network right you see before mobile core fixed network private and iot network and in 5g five thing so what will happen again it is not going to happen on the day one right but eventually like after 2 3 years we will slowly get rid of a hey, 2g don't need just keep that out get all the equipment out 3g is not needed maybe 4g and 5g coexist for 3 4 years then by 2020 nothing no 4g no pstn no thing it just only 5g right 20 30 maybe out of the 10 years time frame that is the vision so when you have a single network you can connect anything that makes our job easy our life easier okay so i would like to pass for here to understand anybody has is it uh, is it uh, too technical or high level uh, any comments like maybe um, okay maybe tenmali you can give a feedback like you know um, i am speaking too fast because it's very important i need to get the feedback then i can fight you accordingly you are mute you are have to unmute yeah yeah one student raised his hand i do not know right. i think it's a student sure uh, from god from uh, ec okay anybody wants any questions like you no know, yeah i want to make you it as a interactive your, yeah and you can talk now hello yeah sure uh, uh, any uh, participant would like to raise question you can ask now hello Uh, I think uh, Vimal has to unmute everybody. Vimal sir. Madam, now people can unmute and talk. Okay, uh, the individuals can unmute and talk, please. Ah, uh, either one or one slide, sir. If you have any doubt. you can ask our guest or uh, as it fine because i want to have the feedback yeah, yeah. what what is your uh, feedback it is good or it is too technical sir, or uh, is, sir, yeah. it is not sir, it is not in a computer science branch i think you will ask you yeah. will yeah. answer it is sure, sure. it is not too technical sir you are all able to understand even i suppose the students understand sir very simple very and uh, very clearly explained uh, and, and the path that you are taking is also good 
So okay, we are comfortable good. with it, sir. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. So and he is from uh, he is professor of uh, Saint Joseph College, Trichy. Very good. Very good. So that's what I would need a feedback because uh, okay. like no, because mm -hmm. when you have a different audience, it's very difficult to you know you know satisfy everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to fine tune. That's what I always do. I ask because when I'm on a real seminar, I ask interact. Like one on one, but it is when I'm looking at the screen and speaking, I need the feedback. That's good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. This is how, like, you no, know, in 5G we are combining. So I'd like to spend some time here. Okay. So what is, if you look at the 5G architecture, this is the 5G architecture. Okay. As I mentioned already, uh, we are going to have 4G also. 4G, it's not, we cannot pass, you know, we'll have 4G, we'll have 5G together. And also we'll have Wi-Fi devices, okay? All the Wi-Fi devices, all the fixed access devices like your thing, everything will be there. But what is happening is instead of having a multiple different, different silent networks, we are going to have only one core network that is called the core network. So you can have different access methods that's called multiple access, single core. That's a concept. The access can be 4G or 5G or Wi-Fi or any CPE devices at your home. But the core, all the traffic is going through a single network. So when you have a single network, it makes efficiency. It makes you know, easy to maintain, manage it. So how we, uh, how we are doing it? If you look at the common core, there is a slide here. Can you see my, um, my mouse when I, when I move? You can yeah. see it, right? Okay, good. So if you look at the common core, there are multiple elements under that, like you no know, virtualized and other thing. You don't need to worry about it because here is only we are talking about high level. So what we are looking at is 5G core control functions, right? What is 5G core control function? We will when you when you make a call, we will find out whether you are LG, we have subscribed for call forwarding, whether you are subscribed for uh, like you no know, voicemail, whether you subscribe for something. So based on that, what number you dialed, right? what number you are dialed, then we make a decision to like, you know, which services you are eligible, uh, which, where to call, wrote the calls. That is all called the core control functions, right? That is one thing. Then subscriber and data management, like, you no, know, whenever you subscribe something, we add your feature. When you we don't want, you say, you know, you will delete something. That's called management in our database. We have our like Oracle or whatever the database that's called. Then charging and billing. Obviously, like you no, know, you have a prepaid or you have a postpaid. Then everything, whatever you service you use, that charging. There is a separate set of functions which will take care of the charging and billing. Then the 5G policy control. What is policy control? I'm like you no. Know, what kind of speed you have, uh, you know, subscribe for it, right? Because some people, premium customers, they want to use. They want to have a high priority. Why? For example, I'm going to talk later. Uh, the IoT, like you no, know, the the, the mission critical devices like controlling the robots or remote surgery, that traffic has to go pretty fast. Maybe let us assume that somebody is downloading a movie, okay? And somebody, the, the doctor wants to do a surgery, which is important. The surgery or the movie, some, some guy is downloading from a pirated site, right? This is the surgery. That is why we call this policy control. When we define, okay, the traffic comes from this doctor, this device, he has to get the highest priority. So that's called policy decisions. This network elements can define the policy and they can take the control. So if you look at the core, there are multiple underlying elements, but we, we make it as a four different blocks. The subscriber and data management, call control functions, charging and policy control. Then uh, here is a 5G user plane. User plane function means, what is 5G user plane? It's very simple. Like, no, you have, uh, you have the, voice over IP gateways, like, you no, know, the gateways which really carry the, your, your, the, whatever I talk or the video in bits and bytes through the cable, your fiber optic cable or ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. These are all called the user plane, right? That's called the user plane. And these are all the access methods, like your 4G phone or 5G phone, or you have a, a through Wi-Fi. So we made the technologies very, very used to be like, you no know, thing but we make it very simple from the user point of view, from the operator point of view to make it you know, efficient. Very simple, two steps, attach. Whether you attach to the antenna or attach to the thing, ask for authorization, whether you are el eligible to use the network, boom. Then you communicate. You want to communicate, you want to do voice, data, video, whatever it is. So that is what we do. So you look at how we simplified the architecture, okay? How we simplified the architecture it is complex underlying, but for you, you don't need to worry about it. This is how 
the 5G architecture. It is amazing. Like as I told you, when I started working in CDOT 1982, I used to work in a 10,000 line, first 10,000 line uh, field trial, right? Digital exchange in Alsur in Bangalore. The equipments we used to have for a 10,000 line is one whole room of big of equipments, like a like a uh, no bureaus, right? Like a bureaus kind of equipments with the multiple hard drives and everything. But whatever we do now, I can do within a single like you no know, probably a like desktop level <laughs> like you no know, device. So that technology has evolved so much in the last you know 25 to 30 years. So that is what uh, like the architecture. All right, next. So this is uh, this is a little too technical, uh, but I'm not going to spend much time. We call it as a different network. I told you about the core control functions, right? In the previous slide. So we defined to different like AMF means access and mobility management, session management, authentication. Uh, this is too technical for you, right? I don't want to go into uh, speed details, but I'm sharing people who like to know about what are the terms. Because when you talk to the technical people in 5G, when you are going attend a conference or anything, they'll be talking in these terms the technology terms, AMF, PCF, UDM, UPF, and then you may not worry, hey, what are these terms? I attended a 5GR uh, seminar, but I didn't hear these terms, right? But at least I'm going to share the slides with you. You can hear it. It's too technical, but you can know the high level view of it. Okay, this is a very important slide. I would like to spend some time here. What is network slicing, okay? As I told you, in 5G, we, 5G is not meant for only for mobile phone communication. It is meant for IoT devices communication. It is meant for mission critical devices communications. Okay. So what we have divided is we have a 5G core network, which carries all your traffic and everything. In that same network, we created a three different virtual networks, imaginary networks. You know, virtualization means imaginary, right? Virtual is imaginary. So we created three different virtualized networks. We call it as a network slicing. That means for all your mobile broadband, all your mobile broadband, it goes through one slide. Because when you are a mobile broadband, somebody is downloading the movie or video, it is not a mission critical, right? If you have a video pass for a few seconds, nothing, going, the earth is not going to fall down. You know, it's just like few seconds disturbance, right? It is not a mission critical. But mission to mission communications, right? The IoT communications, like when you want to control, you're at, off, you're at the office, uh, and you want to control, you want to switch, uh, like, you know, switch on the lights at your home, right? You can just control your, your cell phone through 5G network. Boom. It, it just come and switch on your phone. And, uh, you know, when I want to, like, if it is hot, I can control my car before getting into the car, switch on my AC. My, you know, by the time 10 minutes before, when I come, the AC is already on. It's really nice to get inside the car. This is called the mission to mission communication. But that's a little high priority. Like you want the, uh, no, you want uh, to switch on your uh, lights, your switch on the air condition, or do something. Or like when, uh, when there is a, uh, because we put sensors in the seashore, like IoT sensors. Whenever there is a cyclone or whenever there is a thun, you know, some something happens, the sensors will send the data to uh, weather stations. Now they send the data right in bursts. So those data are very important. Those are IoT data. Whenever you want to control, like you are sitting at an office, you want to uh, switch off some machine in the factory, you can control from here, right? So those are all uh, critical uh, uh, applications. So they should get a higher priority compared to the mobile broadband uh, thing. That's a different slice. What are the most important? Like, as I already told you, when a doctor is doing a surgery, using a robotics, right? Robot remote surgery, that is a very mission critical device. When, uh, when, 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 uh, when a firefighter sitting in the control room, he's controlling a robot to uh, like, you no, know, put the fire in a building, it is mission critical. Or he's sending a robot to uh, recover a, a, you know, a child trapped in the building, that's mission critical, right? So those are the highest priority. So maybe other slides. So how we did, Depends on the need, we create a different network slides. Then we give the policy. I told you about policy. We assign the policies for the thing. Then you, based on the, uh, the, the, the application requirements, we create a different slicing. This is first time you are doing it 5G. It was not available in 4G or 3G. First time you are doing it. So that is why it's very important. Now people talk about, hey, you are using 5G network for everything. How we are doing it? This is how we do it. Like, you know, we use it for IoT devices, we use it for mission critical applications, we use it for mobile broadband, we use it for Zoom meetings or whatever it is, this is how we do. 
all right so now i think i started at 7 okay uh, good so on a good pace okay so before i'm i'm going to get into some interesting topics which will be more uh, no interesting for you i would like to pass for a here also uh, what i have covered so far is the evolution of mobile uh, mobile communications and what are the 5g uh, features major features like you know mobile broadband iot devices mission critical devices high density um you no know, uh, and the low latency or uh, like uh, or the um, you know uh, higher capacity because when when somebody is everybody is sitting in a, a cricket stadium watching a cricket match and they should handle that you know huge number of users in a single area capacity uh, and everything right so that is what i talked about the 5g features and the requirements then we talked about different like you no know, uh, how the antennas evolved evolved how we had a different networks like you no know, silo networks like you no know, 2g 3g 4g 5g fixed access different different silos then how we combining the silos to a single core network 5g can handle everything then we talked about the architecture why what is a 5g architecture like you no know, different core elements like subscriber data management billing call control functions policy functions so sure yeah you want to ask something okay fine so i want to pass for a here before getting into the some interesting stuff uh, i want to show anybody has any questions or anything you want any clarifications here i think we are almost half or not 25 minutes to the talk right so i would like to uh, pass for a while oh, almost we are 20 30 35 minutes right we started at 720 i think 7 uh, sorry so my, sorry my time i get confused <laughs> okay. okay let me look at uh, what time chennai chennai is uh, so we are about almost 45 minutes right uh, now no, 430 okay all right okay good so any questions okay then i move i can move forward then only i can move forward right okay good all right so let me uh, talk about sorry so let me talk about what are the interesting applications so if you talk about massive mission to mission communication that's what iot we talked about like smart city sensor health smart agriculture we can put devices in agriculture right we can monitor the temperature we can monitor even uh, so, you, know, you put sensors is sometimes if the birds are coming like you know nowadays the vetigli or the you no know, uh, mail they are all coming and destroying your you uh, know peacocks are destroying your fields we can put some sensors right when any birds are flying and trying to disturb the sensor will send a notification to cell phone notification to the farmer then farmer can go you know take care of it right that's called smart agri- agriculture and uh, smart building i talk about smart home right how to manage our homes like air conditioner fridges uh, your lights uh, from your mobile phones and industry we can go on talk then augmented reality the mobile phone can i interrupt not... now here ravi sure sure can i interrupt sure uh, you were saying like uh, uh, peacocks can be earthy yeah. land uh, solringa adhe pola vandu how how about the radiation smart home okay. right 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 so that is a very tricky topic yeah it is actually it's a tricky topic just chip to kuriya marad yeah 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 illa ipa enga veetu yeah yeah endren two padathula nam endren two padathile paathirukom okay all the birds are thing so what is happening is the it organizations right because these are all the organization they define the antenna power level okay you can't go beyond certain antenna power level okay uh, you have to have certain antenna power level and stuff like that so but certain places i have heard but is again i have to valid uh, certain places sometime people in order to increase the length the reach of the capacity right in so maybe use a certain power level it reaches only 1 km radius right but some people they want to want to spend additional put additional one more uh, one more antenna to cover the next 1 km they try to increase this power level to higher level to cover this another 2 km radius i heard the stories even in india it's happening right some private operators are doing it when they do it when you are doing beyond what is recommended by the itu organizations the uh, no uh, organizations it happens but again it's a ethical thing right as an ethics like no we are all industry people we are professionals we need to do what is right for the thing we do do some damages 
but again it is not a 100% proved by medical field that okay it is the factor for the you know the extinction of the birds or whatever it is so until it is proved until it is uh, proved beyond the thing it, it is it's a still a doubtful topic uh, like you no know, discussion topic only but as a human being we have to be responsible to the environment responsible to other other things so that's what so so that's a tricky topic okay so we can talk argue and many things <laughs> okay so uh, all right um, so that's okay right that answer your questions okay I'll so then okay so then we talked about the when you are going to have a mobile broadband uh you you are not going to have uh, you are not going to have just a broad uh, like you are going to have augmented reality that means you can you you keep your put your device and you can feel if as if you are sitting in a, a cricket stadium you are watching the right the the, the match and the gaming right people play game my son is always with the ps4 playing with his friends or over internet right so and uh, and a hologram call i'm going to talk about later this is called the user enhanced user ex experience applications just not a plain video call or plain voice call anymore it's going to be something different unique then we talked about the remote surgery surgery and self driving cars it is going to be the future self driving car i'm going to tell a story you know wait for the story it's you know it's an interesting story so these are all the things it's it's a, it's a reality so these are the 5g cases and stuff like that so we just a simple example how fast it is compared to 3g 4g 5g right so when you want to download a movie one hour movie right uh, uh, movie it took in 3g it took 26 hours in 4g 6 minutes in 5g it's only 3.6 seconds how fast the speed right that is what like you know to show the 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 the, the speed of the network and in 5g it is going to be real we are already testing it in the field trials we might have seen in the science fiction movies uh, star wars and science fiction movies like you know these guys sit and when you touch a button like you know a hologram the image will come next to him he will talk as if sitting next to him right it's called hologram technology in 5g it is going to be your 5g phone will have a 3d cameras attached to your phones when you you can have a hologram call the 3d cameras capture your image and transmit through because we are giving a 1 gigabytes to 10 gigabytes speed pipe to your mobile phone it can transmit the high definition all the video and make it as a hologram call so watch this video right this is a video can is it possible did you see the video or it's clear yes. clear right so this is what video call this this is not future hologram call you are not going to have just a simple video call or anything you can feel as if the person is standing next to you and talking to you right this is a hologram call and next is hologram okay this call hologram 3d hologram call in 5g so we are talking about connected cars self driving cars right okay in singapore we are already doing a self driving car we if you go to there is a separate park called biotechnology park and one on technology park you can you can ride a, you can flag a taxi self driving taxi it is the, it's going on a field trial only for about 5 km radius within the you know campus they have a separate lane for a self driving car you can call for a self driving taxi it will come it will pick you you can drop you which our place within the 5 kilometers distance self driving car is a reality uh, definitely not possible in india the kind of driving we do but it is possible in singapore and us right uh, self driving car so what do you do when you are so the car is by driving itself you are sitting what you can do is you have a tv screen you can have a big tv screen side you can sit and watch games right a football game or you no know, cricket game you can watch you can just enjoy your game and you can go all right so that is possible the infotainment we call it as a infotainment entertainment your car is possible through 5g and whenever the you see the slide you see the how the cars are communicating with each other right it it basically so many sensors and cameras it is seeing a, okay uh, are we going close to the by or it also feed the information back to the main control centers whether there is an accident right if there is an accident it will send the message to everybody saying that hey there is an accident uh, it automatically will tell looks like there is an accident shall we take a different route the car will ask you 
you can just say press yes or no that's it the car will take you okay the self driving cars is it's possible it is already field trials are going in us in singapore and it is in in 5 years it is going to be a reality in the western countries okay so let me show you a video for that Okay. So do you see that the video is clear? Yes, yes it is clear. clear. Okay. So you see that uh, no self driving cars are reality. It is taken in a real US. The video was taken in the real US uh, I think in San Francisco area, right? It is a reality. Yeah. Please ask you are asking some question. <laughs> Indian uh, traffic nenachu paathen. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said it is not possible in India. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right go ahead please all right okay so this is uh, this is connected cars it is possible only because of 5g because the car is connected everything is controlled right it is because of 5g the next is called a life saving robot right i told you whenever there is a fire we will not send a human to go and take the people or fire fight we'll send one robots the fire fighters will be sitting in a control centers they will send the robots the robots will do the fire fighting they will be sitting like no that means even in in military right to defuse a bomb to do everything it's all only robots are going to do in the future that's called the robotics right um, so let me show an example of right in another video this is a real video by boston dynamics okay you see these robots are controlled from a remote center which is maybe 10 10 miles or 15 kilometers away in our control and they are all controlled by 5g so now whenever there is a fire fighting or something we send the robots to do the fire fighting or rescue some people because they have a camera right you can just control it so this is possible so i can talk about this so many application like that right but again i just giving a glimpse of three applications so this is the slide which is kind of a busy slide which talks about so many things are possible with 5g like you have consumer electronics your fridge your washing machine you can you can you can control everything right your home your comp, your 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 watch because i track all my thing in my watch uh, my smart watch and uh, uh, remote surgery in education now you look at how zoom is possible right zoom is possible like remote now the covid 19 made the whole thing remote education but uh, please uh, uh, the re- villages children of the village they are sitting in their home they are learning the lessons right through zoom meetings or like uh, from video videos it's all possible only because of the technology now with 4g this much think about 5g when the technology comes uh, even uh, the covid has changed the way education now covid has changed the way the work is going to happen in after 6 months when things back to normal it just because of the technology if the technology is not there think about what 100 years back when the spanish flu hit 1918 1919 the life was miserable now i'm last to 4 months i'm working from home i have not even gone to single day to my office but my business is running my teams are working uh only things i am working more hours i start my day at 8 o'clock sometime and um, sleep at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the night so i am working more okay uh, but that is possible because of the technology right because of the technology and uh, it is going to be amazing but of course for everything there is a bad things also there but let's not talk about the bad things now maybe in a, another discussion we can talk again uh, but we'll talk about what is the good things okay all right i think um i'm going to 
tell a, a, a kind of finish this talk with a story then we can open up for a discussion i think we almost of roughly i planned for about an hour okay i think we are on time we started at 445 right somewhere around 445 so another 5 minutes then we'll open up for suggestions so we have seen in science fiction movies all uh, what is the life like star wars or like you know all the um, all the world various movies and the story i'm going to tell now it is going to be real in 5 to 10 years it may not be real in india but definitely it is going to be real i'm in singapore one of the most advanced country in singapore or tokyo or in seoul or in us so what will happen in the morning right in the morning when you get up 6 o'clock because it everything is going to be in the future smart devices at the home everything is going to connected when you are at home it will be connected through wifi when in the moment you step out of our home it will be automatically switched to 4, 5g okay that is the future the morning let's say 6 o'clock the alarm goes off so automatically based on your interest your phone your maybe the your smart speaker at your home it automatically play whatever song you want to play for today like for example my 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 wife plays tuesday means kanda sasti gavasam thursday mean uh, like you know uh, some other vinayagar song friday means amman song so that's her interest so morning tuesday morning she get them in automatically my smart audio system will play kanda sasti gavasam okay you wake up to kanda sasti gavasam and the morning 6 o'clock then because you can set up your 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 window screens also smart devices your windows curtains also smart devices connected to the internet connected to the cloud computing connected through the 5g or whatever it is so how you program how much percentage of light you want to come to your when you morning okay based on the time or whatever it is so let's say 6 o'clock means it automatically the curtains will go off okay the moment the the no then the bed is also a smart device right it can do a massage for you like maybe little bit massage and you can just get up okay get up and you go to the you go to the you know, bathroom brush then you want to you know you want to know what is the latest news you just say news everything will be voice controlled in the future you need not type even anything future it's going to be voice controlled you just say say is news automatically a yeah, display will come in in front of you it will show the major news cnn news whatever website you subscribe for it okay cnn news then you walk the display will also move forward to we can program whatever 2 meters distance or 3 meter distance you want the display this is called virtual display so you walk right you walk you go to the fridge the fridge will it's a smart device it will say uh, milk is running out Uh, apple is only two is available but you wanted 10 apples right it will say these are the items low or running out of uh, you know stock do you want to order it will ask you have to check say that yes because i need milk i need just press yes it will automatically the fridge will automatically send the order to amazon.com or whichever grocery site you want to right so it will send the order automatically you get it then in the future you are not going to have maids in the future you will have robots you will have robots maybe you have personal robot one robot for your wife one robot for you uh, or like children you have multiple robots uh, they know what is your preferences and stuff like that the robot will come and serve a coffee at, at, at your dining table what you no know, dining table then you take shower and whatever it is you are reading a news and uh, then you are having your breakfast then you have a meeting let's say i am have a meeting at 9 o'clock okay at my uh, with my japanese clients right japanese clients i have to be in the office at 8:45 to get ready for the meeting my car my automatic car will track the traffic how long it will take to go to my office so when i am talking when i am sitting and reading my newspaper or doing some more the car will send a message hey it takes 30 minutes to go to office come down 8:15 because you need to be there at 8:45 to for the meeting at the, the my car knows my calendar my my meeting schedule and everything so so 8:15 I, i didn't go because the, my car has already come out maybe from the car parking lot it come out to my in front of the home 8:8 for 15 it is waiting it didn't see me then my shoe will pinch me you know it is called shoe is also a device shoe also uh, connected to the internet it knows your schedule okay it's called haptic devices touch and feel devices 
the shoe shoe will pinch you hey you are supposed to get down why you are still sitting okay the, when you see the shoe pinches <laughs> pinches you then okay 8:15 i'm late let me rush okay you get down and you go get inside your car so get inside your car obviously sit back the car is going to drive on its own it knows your office then you can do a final editing of your slides or whatever you prepare 30 minutes you prepare for your meetings or listen to your music you go to your office the car drops you the portico that car automatically goes to the car park it parks its own uh, you know parking lot allotted parking lot then 9 o'clock you go to the conference room so the conference is going to be a virtual reality conference like a hologram virtual reality augmented reality conference uh, uh, conference call so you take a conference my japanese client as if i'm sitting next to my japanese client i'm going to talk i'm going to talk in english where is my japanese clients are going to talk in japan it is a real time translation whatever i speak in english for them it will hear in japanese whatever they speak in japanese for me it will automatically in a real time translated it comes to me as a english you know that is how the meetings this is how the future lifestyle right so how it is possible it is all possible because of 5g is a major enabler for this as i told you when you are at home your devices are connected through wifi when the moment you step out of your home your devices automatically switches to uh, switches to your uh, your uh, 4g and our 5g network and it is possible by cloud computing it is possible by remote robotics it's possible by internet security because everything is in internet you got to have a solid security to protect your network so this is how uh, the future uh, the major enabler is 5g this is how it is going to be i think i plan for about an hour i think i'm kind of roughly finishing it an hour uh, an hour okay so with that uh, let's open up for a discussion like you can ask 5g related questions or any general technology questions or any my experience questions uh, we can talk about half an hour or an hour i am available okay, okay. so how is it so far uh, uh, tenmuli is it uh, fine in terms of high level yeah. overview of yeah very very interesting okay good like uh, two months back i have to give an article for 5g okay i was searching and hunting in uh, google okay so it sounds interesting and i'm going to send this again to my daughter <laughs> sure, sure. thank sure, you sure. and uh, dear uh, faculty my friends please the forum is open now to discuss yeah if but anybody discuss wants it? some deep dive technical discussions also i'm ready to share my okay. deep dive if you have some like, deep dive uh, technical uh, ravi questions. is my friend i can talk to him any time but please uh, get connected now Uh, I think they can unmute and talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let me go to uh, gallery more so that I can also see people. Yes, right? yes. From, yeah, yeah. Uh, Asha, madam, I'm seeing you. Hello. Nanda Kumar, sir. you can unmute and speak please and thanks for coming hello hello sir please please yeah please please go ahead yeah sir sir your way of explanation of 5g technology is very very nice sir actually i also worked in bsnl sir four years back Uh, now i'm working as a lecturer in polytechnic sir uh, uh, the brief introduction of uh, the advanced future technology 5g is very nice sir very good thank you so <laughs> any you have any questions or anything you can even technology trends india telecom industry i have been working with indian telecom industry bsnl i am a consultant for bsnl so so any questions you have any i'm i'm very feel free to ask okay What good, uh, good evening, and sir. I want to say Nanda Kumar is the PR first, and he got the order from uh, Dr. Jayalalita. Oh, yes. amazing! Very good, fantastic! Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, please. This is yeah. this is Vimal Jaral from Saint Joseph's College, sir. As introduced okay. by Madam, uh, sir, I enjoyed your talk, sir. It was so informative, and it was sir, very simple. Sir, open up your video, sir. Vimal, sir, please open up your video, please. 
madam uh, my video uh, my camera is not working madam from no, it's okay like it's not comfortable people sometimes you may not be in a position to show your video we are appreciate your privacy please please go ahead yeah yeah sir uh, uh, even layman of technology will understand your talk and it was so interesting even uh, you know you explained even every bit of slide in a simple terms uh, and it made us interesting towards uh, to go into the technology my question is that sir uh, see sure. when we talk about integrating iot internet of things yes. to 5g technology you yeah. know there are going to be interoperational uh, interoperability um, um, you know iot works with uh, micro level devices uh, like sensors and yeah. that has got analog uh, much of analog and the technology that we are talking about is digital yeah. and when we think of connecting those iot devices in rough terrain like mountains even in india still yeah. many villages are not connected right, uh, many right. uh, many places which are remote which are not connected when yeah. we talk about integrating various uh, you know heterogeneous uh, devices heterogeneous networks into one single uh, technology called 5g um, how far it is feasible in the country like india maybe it may take years okay. but uh, how are you going to address these issues of interoperability heterogeneity and uh, uh, other problems like uh, network issues and so on okay that's a good question okay let me tell you some share some history here when uh, dr sam petroda developed uh, when i worked 1992 to 92 for the, the period we developed a technology racks we call it as a rural automatic exchange okay so if we didn't buy that you know if you buy a already existing equipment from something like uh, alcatel or something like a nokia or uh, you know uh, huawei other companies it may not work for our terrain right that is what we developed a call because in villages you will not have air conditions in villages you will not have power okay so we taking into those consideration we developed a rugged technology called rural automatic exchanges when we installed those exchanges 1988 to 1995 that periods all over the india we installed in every villages okay that 128 line rule automatic change 256 rule automatic changes which doesn't require air condition and work in a rugged condition and stuff like that so that's what i'm just wanted to say history okay paralleling on that what we do the iot devices when we put this iot devices this iot devices are very small devices they will be designed to handle all this tough weather right whether it is uh, like you no know, rain or hot and everything the tough weather plus they will be working on very low power okay so most of the time 99% of the time the devices will be in sleeping mode that is been power saving and sleeping mode when whenever they want to send a traffic they send it just wake up and get the connected to the they will find the nearest antenna to get the connectivity they will send a small byte of information okay then get the acknowledgement then again they go to the sleeping mode okay that's why you don't need a you, maybe you need to change the battery in once in six months or once in a regular 3a battery or whatever battery you know once in uh, six months or once in a year okay so and how to reach the terrains right whether it is a seashore or whether it is some hilly stations that is where we will we have to put antennas right because we need to provide some low we call it as a even in antennas technology we call long range antennas okay as part of this okay we have small small cell antennas long range antennas uh, so those things are available those things so with that only again as i said it is not going to be possible from day one but maybe after 5 years after 10 years those things will happen and uh, people will define design uh, you know, design those iot devices to take care of these things okay so so yeah is it is it answers your questions yes sir yes sir absolutely sir absolutely so sir. why i said yeah why i said racks because this is a challenge when i was a young engineer 22 years old engineer when you are working in cdot we had but we solved okay what is our job our engineer's job is to solve the problem okay we want problems we want to solve the problem okay so we will find a way to solve it but again we cannot solve everything on the day one but these things we already taken care like you no know, how to handle in the rough terrain and the problems Uh, th- thank you sir thanks for the wonderful answer sir if possible uh, how are we going to uh, uh, face or address the uh, naming issue you know uh, you know identifying the devices yeah. uh, in 5g 
how are we yeah. going to identify you now we are talking about shifting up ipv4 to ipv6 and okay. still it is under research how are we going to address that sir no, ip ip no ip6 is uh, already already is there actually ip6 is already there it's not about research but uh, in, in in a country like india i'm, ta- I'm okay. addressing the country like india okay, is yeah. not yeah, yeah. still is. yeah yeah probably there is some challenges in india okay and uh, again i am not a expert in the uh, in the ethernet addressing or anything but what we do is that is how from a high level point of view we say that we have designed a network to handle this huge connectivity huge massive connectivity okay so uh, and uh, maybe i'm not aware of it in india we have this ip4 to ip6 i uh, know uh, the challenges but uh, those things will be taken care and uh, uh, as part of the specs as part of the thing okay but again as i said i'm not an expert to answer in details here but these things we already consider we have we have taken care of it thank you sir thank you so kind of you sir. okay good so any of you there are many topics for discussion you can even shift over from 5g yeah if anybody has questions about uh, internet security because i i have we i work on internet security like again uh, high level we have products to help cater this security how to do the testing the, those things also sir good evening yeah please sir uh, in 5g we have to deploy a lot of uh, uh, uh base stations like access points and yep. everything should interoperate with each other and uh, how uh, interference will be dealt sir okay uh, you are talking about um, uh, you are talking about the radio frequency interference right yeah yeah okay so if you look at um, one of the things um, uh, if you are looking at the pure pure electromagnetic pure electromagnetic uh, thing um when i was uh, you know studying in the colleges and initial days of things we have uh, you know uh, the signal to noise ratio we study so many theoretical things okay but what is happening is when we move to this new technology the ft that you know for full dimensional multi input multi output and uh, also this uh, you know mimo uh, you know technologies so what is the people have mastered it over a period of time they mastered it how to overcome this uh, like you know um, uh, this uh, electromagnetic variations how to put so much bytes of information in a small uh, you know uh, the, the spectrum level so it is all it's mastered but again it is not going to be like you know uh, uh, here and there there will be some issues right because of some uh, reachability issues some uh, for example if you are having a big power cable or something like that there will be that's what we see sometimes uh, my signal is not good uh, let me step out and out of the room or will let me go to the outside and we do that right even when we are when you are speaking on a regular phone so here and there there will be corner cases will be there but again so you know those things are already taken care uh, but uh, i don't see it as a major problem there will be some issues some corner case issues but uh, again when we design something it is not going to be always 100% perfect there will be especially the radio access side network which is a very tough challenge because i am a core architect i know what to do when you give me a this switch hand has to handle so many millions of call so many uh, data traffic i know i can put the parameters i can design i can put some extra bandwidth also to handle it but radio access network we call it as a ran ran is a little tricky one so that's why we into get into the external factors the distance and other things so there will be some challenges but let's not worry about it so we we engineers will figure it out okay but there will be some challenge i am not denying it there, yeah. yes, thank you okay nalla vela enna solla nanicha okay uh, just joking okay just for fun okay anybody else i think madam febina is here asha madam is here and uh, sorama devi is here and uh, many of my colleagues are here please let's have discussion chitra chitra are you here chitra can you speak She just now appeared for her doctorate viva last week. 
ओके गुड गुड कंग्रेजुलेशंस द बेस्ट विशेष एन मलिक मैम कैन वी हैव क्वेश्चंस इन द चैट आल्सो सो दैट या या श्योर या पीपल कैन या ऑफ कोर्स या टेक्नोलॉजी Uh, it creates a, a very big uh, distance in human relation and okay. uh, so when it becomes when the technology becomes more smart 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 yeah the human relations also the human become becomes absolutely. like machine and the machine absolutely. become like human so, absolutely so very contradictory thing that which absolutely. i accept Uh, I, being a communication a... engineer, uh, <laughs> it pops us again and again into my. Is this correct, or we are doing some uh, harm to nature? Absolutely. So it comes into my mind always. It's a, it's a, it's a very social question. Uh, let me spend some time here. It's a very interesting topic. And by the way, she is professor from Anna University, Ur Pramsa. Oh, good. Very good. Uh, very nice. So this is a very social topic. Uh, I am a social thinker also, right? I I do a lot of social activities, social things. Uh, so let me let me address this. See, it is a challenge. It is a challenge. Look at that. Even I get addicted to phone sometimes, right? When I when I was getting to the Facebook, I think I'll spend five minutes, ten minutes, then boom, I see half an hour gone. <laughs> Facebook, right? So when I get addicted. my son when he plays games or when i son on the instagram i don't have any rights to tell him shout at him hey don't look at your phone right it has become a problem it is it is a big social problem i completely agree it's a big social problem so family problem too yes family problem <laughs> i have seen so many people like even family life right you no know, all the internet scams all the internet things it is you know so that is why no that's what i said in the beginning let's talk about the good things i know all the bad things about internet also right so it is creating a lot of challenges even to be honest it is it is it is a, it is a social a psychologist social uh, social uh, sociologists they are facing a huge problem in the future it is it is going to be a challenge like you no know, we are going to be like a behave like a humanoid not like a real human right it's called humanoid right it is a mix of yes. machine and uh, man and i uh, in fact i shared my interview uh, last uh, two weeks three weeks back i gave an interview in uh, in a, in a tv and i'm sure uh, tenmuli also aware of it i also feel because i've been working in this technology for 24 you no know, 31 years i've been running around madly from country to country solve customer problems a uh, new technology thing i also got a saturation point so that is what what i am planning to do is i want to move to teaching because at least i have the option to interact with the young students i have the i can mentor some uh, thing at the same time i am telling you i am going to farming okay i am going to do hobby like you no know, i'm going to vetikada i'm going to come back to tanjavur after 3 4 years i'm going to like you no know, i disconnect from technology to some extent not fully obviously i cannot do fully but at least we can i go to my uh, my village and do some organic farming or something because i myself is got saturated like if you look at me i been working on 2g 3g solving this problem that problem it's all same thing like you no know, we different type of problem but uh, it is causing lot of social problem uh, it is it is a fact it is a social issue it is unfortunately and i feel very sad for our children i feel very sad for children because yes, when yes, we sir. were we didn't have much in, uh, distractions like we go yes. out and play okay but they our children i feel sad for them they they have the thing everything they have a tv you know my son i tell my son hey you always in front of one screen either a laptop or phone or tv right <laughs> no uh, i feel sad it is a social problem unfortunately i don't have a solution or you don't have a solution or nobody has a yes, solution sir. right now yes, i think i may have to call a doctor Uh, for take caring of eyes uh, eyes eyes are yeah. becoming dry yeah exactly screen. yeah exactly is a topic But, we uh, can talk for hours yeah okay yes sir yes sir 
thank you sir thank you thank you no problem thank you femina for talking and uh, chitra has given how will 5g latency be lower if processing is being done at cloud okay uh, cloud cloud okay see what will happen is <coughs> cloud is um what do you say we all know that um, no a cloud as a service whenever we need like if in in the old and days we had a silo computers like mainframe computers mini computers and uh, this computers right <coughs> so it is a challenge because when you have multiple silos we need to move the traffic from one network to another network like you no know, one device like one computer to another computer that's why you see a lot of delay milliseconds kind of delay right because especially when you're handling a circuit switching devices and other things but when you look at the cloud because everything is stays in the cloud it's all servers it's all servers right it's all server high speed servers and uh, you might see that in a single high speed server the entire network uh, functions can stay in the same server but we call it as a you no know, mme we call it as a pcf we call it as a database function we call different function but in a olden days it is at the 4g or in it is a 3g it has to be in a different different computers but everything in a single uh, uh, high p- high speed server running as a virtual machines that is why we can like you no know, we can uh, we we expect that uh, you no know, the the data transfer or the control everything is uh, goes in a you know in a in a less than milliseconds uh, kind of thing that is why again we i told you the concept of network slicing right we have a you no know, three different virtual path one for dedicated for uh, high latency low latency devices like a robotic service surgery or something one dedicated for iot devices one dedicated for mobile phones so we have the policy controls to take care of uh, those things okay because of cloud computing only it is possible if it is had a silos or mainframe computers this low latency is not possible so it's cloud is providing an advantage for us in terms of hard like this okay swaram so nice to see you here what time you want to speak swaram swaram unmute panni pesunga this is professor of finance at team to see oh good very good very good excellent swaram please <coughs> Unmute, unmute. Let's chat up for a moment, sir. Okay, no. Sir, does the edge computing is related with this latency reduction? Yes, yes. Of course. What we do is, in the even in the cloud computing, we call it as a edge, right? Because what will happen yes. is, um, again, as I said, no. What we do is, when we have a content, right? We call this a you know content distribution. When we have the content. we put the content at the edge right instead of keeping it the core for example we call it as a uh, what is that a term it is not coming like you no know, replication like you no know, for example mirroring right if if you have a uh, if you have a uh, website which has all the data so there is a content this is cdn network see there is a concept called content distribution network concept so whatever information you have a data which is in the centralized uh, so web server it can be put it in the edge of the network also using the edge computing so that when you need access some information when you want some uh, download some video it immediately you you get from the edge rather than let's say assume that you want to download a video or access some information from chennai if the information is available in chennai itself it is easy there is low latency but if it is say that it has to get it from all the way from delhi right you have to go to all the way delhi pull it from delhi server and bring it to it it is going to cause some latency so that is also part of the cloud computing edge computing there's a whole umbrella of things that is why the 5g we move to the cloud computing and uh, not having a silo based architecture and what will happen to the big big towers existing now for 4g okay so the towers what we are going to do is these towers will eventually phased out 
because as i said now 4g 4g is still very much available it will coexist the 4g will coexist for at least for another 5 years until 2025 after 2025 it will move so eventually it will become a small antennas we call it the small antennas what you do is nowadays even the 5g antennas you go to a mall you may have not seen that the mall will have a 5g antennas some corner of the places small antennas like a wifi you know the wifi uh, access point like wifi router they will have small small routers if you go to in 5g every street will have a small device like in a pole or attached to like a flat towers itself will have a cell yeah like small cells we call the small cells small cells so you, yeah yeah lamp post correct exactly like a cable box you will have a lamp post you will have it in the future all the big antennas will be gone because that consumes so much power like again it causes so much of radiation also right uh, we talked about uh, the thing so the small cells will take care of it small cells antennas will take care of it Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, madam. Uh, this is all about your system is very nice. Highly informative. Thank one you. Small doubt, sir. If you want to do project using 5G, is okay. it possible to show demo, sir? Hello. You are breaking. Can you hear me, sir? Your voice is breaking. I can't hear you. Maybe you can type it in the chat. Hello? Maybe you are. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Thenmali, you are hearing her, or you are also breaking for no, you? No, no, breaking, breaking noise. Correct, correct. Break, pani the power, this Sharma. Hello, is it okay now? Hello. Yeah, a little Hello? better. Yeah, please go ahead. Hello. Uh, can you hear? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, okay, the solo one. Hello. Yeah, yeah, hearing. Uh, sorry. Uh, if we want to do projects, sir. Okay. Project using IG for home automation for small application. Yeah. Uh, how can we do the demos? How to implement actually in real time? Oh, real. Okay. What you can do is, I if you want to do some demo, yeah. Obviously, like obviously, in 5G is still not in India, right? So you need to approach some labs. For example. Uh, I'm. I don't know whether it is. Uh, no, you can approach uh, something like uh, Reliance. Reliance Geo. They might be having a lab, small uh, 5G testing lab. Every major operators they do the testing lab. That is what I do. I go to every operators like AT&T or NTT Docomo or uh, you know Singtel. I go. You know my team will do the testing. After testing only they move to the production environment. They go to the real life uh, deployment. so i am sure a lot of uh, these thing will be there are some premier research institutes like yeah. probably for c dot f dot in bangalore they might be having a research uh, thing yeah. or maybe some iits so they might be having they might be having some uh, some labs so you need to approach these research premier research institutes or some operators to tie up and do the development that's a thing all right for example i can connect uh, if that is needed some with the reliance geo my friend is the head of uh, head of uh, so, no uh, head of uh, reliance geo operations arul bright so maybe you know he can get some connections like uh, no so that is what we need to do you need to work with some research premium research yeah. institutes or operators yeah yeah thank you sir will they provide us that There so, is another Samira, question. Optical fiber, what are five G? And how far it is advantage is in okay. Okay. Let me tell you, <coughs> optical fiber is not a five G. Optical fiber is the transport medium. Okay, it's a wire. So, what is an advantage of optical fiber? That brings back my memory. Like when I was a third year student, uh, I did a paper presentation in IEEE about optical communication, right? IEEE students conference. So, I still very much in my head i i can't forget those uh, you know uh, 35 years back so what is optical is when we are using a electrical cable right when you are using a twisted pair cable the typical telephone cable when we are at home you might have a typical car it causes interference signal to noise ratio we call it as a signal right okay? because the twisted pair cable or electrical cable it picks a, a interference a noise from the electromagnetic interference but in optical we are transmitting the information in the form of light right in the light 
so the light doesn't pick up any interference that is why because whatever we speak whatever i you know whatever the video it is come to you coming to you mainly 90% it comes through the fiber optical communication only the last mile connectivity from the telephone exchange or from the connectivity it comes to your home through wifi or uh, some coaxial cable okay because 90% of the transport layer is uh, uh, optical so optical the greatest advantage of optical is there is no electromagnetic interference there is no noise reduction okay that is why it's optical so the optical can be used for 2g 4g 5g doesn't matter that's only a transport media okay okay so all right hello sir hello sir so i'm not sure the internet is actually sorry i can't sorry i can't hear you at all chat box la podringa okay so sorry i can't hear you it's you ibe huh? i can't But hear you it's poor connectivity i couldn't uh, can you type your question in the chat pad so that's we that i think we need to give a parcel we need to send a parcel 5g phone to doctor <laughs> <Okay. laughs> advance new trial 5g trial extra you said that uh, we need phone we should work with uh, some 5g deploying correct. Uh, correct. Uh, correct. service providers yes, uh, yes will they support us or is there any protocol Uh, yeah i think to like approach uh, them. yeah obviously when you approach directly they will not entertain you it's very simple yeah. because i am <laughs> i am also yes, worked sir, in the yes, industry sir, because you know, i am telling the reality I... yeah you have to go through when... some internal contacts you have to go through somebody oh. known person for example you can approach uh, thenmali madam she has uh, he's okay. uh, my friend is the senior executive in reliance jo he can help okay. uh, please go through that channel okay that will be available okay. and uh, then we will connect you to the right people for example i don't know right i can uh, uh, i can you know if there is i, I, I can find I out i get connected you ma'am to yeah. my friend sure. arun karul bright yeah okay ma'am okay ma'am okay thank you right. sure. because i i tried when i did my research sir but uh, since i i i don't have any loophole to enter right. uh, i was not uh, able to enter i was very much interested in re doing real time data taking Correct. the real time data and performing uh, uh, a comparative uh, studies yeah. but uh, yeah but uh, i was not unable to do that uh, so yeah that so, that's yeah. a that's a known limitation obviously that's what you need to go through the some known people okay they will help you okay okay sir okay thank you okay uh, madam dr kalaywani is here you want to talk Dr. Kalevani, Madam Asha, can you please? Asha? And anybody else who wants to talk, please feel free. Hello. I think Asha, Madam, is getting ready Hello. to talk. Asha, Madam, please. Ah, when your voice is feeble, are you? Apriya, just put on your mic, Madam. Ah yeah. Yeah. Hello sir. Nice to see you. Yeah, hello, hello. Good to see you. I'm, I'm Asha. So yeah. I'm from this non uh, 5G background. Uh. Sure, sure, sure. Still, electrical sir. Nangala yeah, electrical. Solenga, solenga, still, please. Uh, I was able to understand. It's not the Very technical good. part illama, but otherwise the futuristic the the purunjudu sir. Very good. Kelvi kekra alavukku vandu illa. So I was just listening. Okay. Oh, very nice of you. That's what very I kind of customize the talk to yes, uh, make sure that I have to cover different audience. That's no, what I didn't go too technical. Thing. You know, okay. But at least you know the high level. What is five G? Yeah. What is four G? What are the you know, features? So it, you know that's all you need. That's what we can cover in one hour, right? Okay. So that is what I tried my level that best. And the yeah. way I want to introduce Madam uh, Dr. Asha. Okay. Uh, she was the key person in getting her college IIFT, a self-financing college. to get autonomous status very good very proud very good to hear okay and it is and in ranking again, so again as i said to retrade i have a great respect for my teachers this is a noble profession okay even other day one of other friend indumadi she is a professor my college mate she is a professor in anna university mit 
okay where abdul kalam studied so we are exchanging messages so you are the like you know i am i'm openly saying i'm a corporate guy we are all money oriented guys okay <laughs> so we like we are business guys right ruthless business people okay but teaching is a noble profession okay you like you know uh, you you shape the future uh, you create you produce future engineers future technologists future leaders and what i am today what i am today from a small village studied in a tamil medium working in a multinational as a corporate executive is just because of my teachers my professors in fact i have mentioned these thing in my book also i don't know whether uh, like you know few incidents and i mentioned i mentioned in my books and uh, just because of my teachers okay i have a great respect for your profession thank you so and uh, and uh, you know i am very proud and uh, you know and all salute to you all for the great service you are doing to the community thank okay you. thank you and today happens to be abdul kalam's uh, yes yes so so, so in very... another half an hour time i'm going to talk in another conference about dr <laughs> abdul kalam in 5 okay. minutes after <laughs> in an great. international conference okay? i think so, uh, this is a real tribute uh, to him today Okay, like yes, exactly. yeah, we, we scheduled this program last week. Thank God it got postponed today. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank you that is what yeah. experience, sir, with us because this gap has to be bridged, you know, between the right. corporate and uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. That is what I'm trying to do in a small way. When I come back after three, four yes, years, I'm going to try to teaching. I might come to your university as a guest lecture. Maybe don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come and give a guest lecture. Okay, okay. that is why i introduced you right here yes, very good, all very the good. professors so i will come and give and it is a, it is a way of giving back to the community yes. i have given multiple guest lectures when i was in india for two years so i you know my philosophy is it's a way of giving back to the community right okay when i come and talk out of 100 students maybe two students get inspired that is a great success okay so like we will have an inspiration talk for uh, motivational talk for students also students yeah definitely and i think i will invite all my uh, professors sure, sure, here sure 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 so okay. that we can have a thank you denmuli ma'am thank you thank you asha thank, thank you, you so much. thank you thank you uh, anybody else who wants to speak like i think uh, ravi is busy for the next uh, seminar yeah uh, and i want to go home and watch his talk then yeah sure i think we can wrap it up i think we are almost 6:30 right okay. 6:20 right yeah, and can, any yeah. any of the professors here or any of the teachers here can give out of time on my behalf here please nane pesradala punyam illa like uh, i am a host i know i would like to thank all my friends here for staying with us for the evening to hear such a hard topic but it is very interesting ஒன்ஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் <laughs> Okay. and those were different technologies which are used in different parts of the country i mean different parts of the world and uh, people need to uh, had to buy specific devices for those type of uh, networks okay will 5g bring a technology or a standard that would be common for all cellular iot devices mm-hmm. so we, we can use make use of that uh, to power uh, to communicate okay. uh low power devices sure, sure. that is my question okay good okay uh, to be honest uh, i am not a, a, a ran expert as i already told you know i am a okay. core expert i am a core architect okay, okay. but uh, from my experience the whole objective of 5g is to make it as a single network right so any device can attach that is the concept whether it is a wifi device whether it's iot device whether it is any device can attach to 5g and get authenticated and it can communicate that is a whole concept so considering that i am sure the industry ietu or the like you no know, all the ansi all the uh, standard organization they are working because the 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 the, the you may have seen multiple releases of specs right uh, release 9 release 10 something like that you can see so i'm sure they'll be they might be working but i will take your question maybe i can check with my my ran experts also i can i, I can maybe i can later Uh, answer by email to you know email also okay thank you sir thank you sir 
Okay, Maithili, do you want to speak? Maithili from Karur. Maithili, I think she is my teacher. Maithili. Okay. Maithili, admit Pani Pesaring La. Okay. Uh, Talabadi, Pesaring La. Talabadi here. Talabadi Rajeshekaran, are you here? Okay. And uh, there's a message. Session is very informative and awesome. Could you please share the slides? Yeah, yes, sure. I will share. Uh, please uh, send me your email and I will forward the slides to my email. Okay. okay. Uh, if anybody wants to speak, we can speak or, or else we can wind up the session and thanks for watching. And uh, Vimal Jaral is going to propose a vote of thanks. Okay. Hello? Uh, yes, Hello? please. Ma'am, I am Aitli. Okay, yes, ma'am. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. Sir, uh, it's really nice experience for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, it's sir. My, it's my uh, pleasure. He is from uh, Kapoor uh, Sense Department, uh, Karun okay. Government okay. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Very good, very good. Uh, so, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Thank you. You have any question or anything? Or? Nothing, sir. Because okay. uh, we didn't have a awareness of 5G, but I oh, just right. learn a few things about uh, the seminar. Sure sure. sure, sure. That's the whole objective. Like, just to give a high-level introduction, right? I'm glad uh, that... Yeah. Uh, you... yeah, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir. And uh, anybody else? Uh, ma'am, can I have one question, ma'am? Yes, sure. sir, please. Please. Uh, sir, uh, thanks for your informative uh, presentation, sir. I just have a small question. Is yeah. there any application that will be helpful for us to check the radiation levels near us? And what will be the prescribed limit for us to be in, sir? Okay. That is why, as I said, no. Um, definitely, that is a very uh, gray area. The radiation is a very gray area. So a lot of people are uh, doing research uh, and... Uh, Nobody has a conclusion that, okay, this radiation cause, people say that radiation causes cancer, right? Now you see a lot of yeah. high number of, uh, you know, increased number of cancer patients. And uh, so, but again, there is no conclusive evidence for that. And radiation causes birds, right? No birds uh, to move away from the town uh, and the cities. Again, there is no conclusive ev evidences. So uh, that's why I don't see there is any applications available. Um, other, I'm pretty confident. I don't think anything application which is available at your thing. And uh, even if it is available, I don't know the cell phone companies will allow because then everybody will start measuring. They will sue the cell phone companies for and they will go bankrupt. Okay. So that is another challenge. Unless otherwise it is proven beyond doubt. Okay. This radiation causes a problem. It is going to be a debatable topic. It will continue to be a debatable topic only in the future. And, uh, but there are some harms, but I'm not saying that it is, uh, as I already said, it is not there, but uh, somebody has to prove beyond doubt. Then only uh, other things will be taken care. But definitely there is no application available uh, as of I know to, to measure the radiations. But not like, no, for example, for a common application, but it will be a specific devices will be available, right? The industrial devices or the, or the manufacturers and those devices will be available to check those radiations or the coverage and everything, but not like a app which is you can download your phone or whatever you can use it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. All right. Thank you. Sir, good evening, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Please. Please. Sir, I'm Balamurgan DPT Sikarun, sir. Please, Balamurgan, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, first of all, I don't have any questions, sir. This one. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, but I got some basic information of, uh, from you, sir, like uh, 2G, 3G, 4G. Correct. That one, sir. Uh, the session is very informative, sir. Okay, thank, thank you, you so sir. Much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thanks, thanks for the feedback. I appreciate okay, it. Sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I'm Femina. Uh, yeah, but, please. Uh, in, in India, there are some apps, sir. If you go uh -huh. to the Play Store, there are some okay. apps available, uh -huh. as, uh, like uh, radiation detector, radiation meter. Likewise, some apps are available, but actually, I don't know how to <laughs> use it. 
but there are some apps available so this is available the apps are available to measure your wifi device radiation or it is a cell phone tower radiation i think it's wifi yeah wifi basically wifi is that is different wifi is your uh, because it is in your home right yes yes in your home and uh, there is a lot of applications available to measure uh, where because in even in your home you have wifi you have a blind spot some areas you will not have wifi connectivity yes, yes, sir. so yes, sir. in order yes, to sir. test that level where you have a good connectivity where to put your uh, uh, your wifi router in which particular place there is an apps available okay that is definitely but it's not for measuring the cell phone tower radiation because, uh, that's what i was uh, i was answering that question okay so this is available this is like we call it as a heat map where to put your wifi router so that you have a better connectivity so those things are available that's for wifi specific thing wifi router specific things okay sir okay so because i i remember that i went through some 5g radiation Correct. detectors likewise uh, i came across this word cellular okay. cellular radiation detector okay. likewise so just i want to share maybe, maybe that's right the asaf no i don't uh, i don't think this available for uh, for a commercial thing but maybe i can i might be wrong yeah i might be wrong i can as i said no i am a core architect i am not a ran guy ran i know high level information but to core yes, is sir. you ask any questions on call flows or those things and i can go to the white board i can draw and discuss also okay okay thank you sir so yeah go ahead uh, sir in the in the plane sir actually uh, in sdr the okay. data plane and the control plane is being right. handled separately in order to reduce the latency right uh, exactly see what uh, will happen is let me tell you some of the interesting stuff when i was working for c dot we were developing a closed architecture that's called circuit switching architecture right so your c dot switch cannot communicate with alcatel lucent switch okay only through the major thing coming but you the module i am using cannot use it right this all closed architecture from closed architecture we went to the agree you know control plane separately uh, data plane separately data plane. signaling plane separately you know ss7 protocol i am not sure sure aware of yes, ss7 yes, protocol yes, right you see ss7 yes. protocol isdn protocol that is all yes, signaling sir. plane then you have a control plane uh, we call it as a you know media gateway controller then we call it as a, a, a gateway in fact now 2006 2007 i was one of the core architect for lens communications india's building the voice over ip network across the entire uh, india we built we installed about 150 media gateways with the media gateway controller and signal gateways uh, i was part of that project for that project only i got transfer from us back to singapore to handle that particular major project it's a 800 million dollar project for us and my part is a 30 million dollar uh, for my product okay so we can talk in detail those uh, control but it is very much true data plane control plane uh, signaling plane uh, three different planes yeah okay sir thank you thank you so much it has been a uh, nice time to be interactive with you sir thank you and sure, thank, thank you madam for this opportunity thank you thank you shana ma'am thank you and vimal sir Yeah, yes, ma'am. I think Karthik Nanmaran. I think he came just now. Uh, okay. So otherwise, I think we can wrap it up because okay, I think we are okay. yeah, because I, I, in another half an hour I have to go for another meeting. Okay, okay. Doctor Vimal oh. sir, please do yeah. all of thanks. I I welcome you, sir. Please. Good evening, everybody. It is my pleasure and privilege to propose word of thanks for this uh, uh, wonderful uh, technical discussion we had with Dr. Ravi Chandran Somu. Uh, it has been so grateful, uh, great sir, that you have uh, depicted or illustrated uh, uh, virtually the 5G technology, which we are not, uh, which many of us are not aware. And your talk was so informative. Even a layman of technology will understand. the key features of various technology the evolution starting from 1g to 4g and what is going to be future and what are the challenges in future and some of us are kindled uh, that uh, we, we have driven uh, from your talk some research topics that we could uh, go in and which will certainly be of uh, help to us to go in for research uh, particularly a country like india uh, where we as academician will be able to bring out, out uh, research products so that it will certainly benefit uh, india and it is coincident that uh, uh, the talk eventually uh, you know uh, uh, fell on uh, the day of uh, abdul kalam's uh, remembrance it is a tribute for it 
and he is the man one who loved the country uh, particularly the villages to be equipped with technology and will certainly move ahead and we have the greater role as academies in to make use of technology to reach out to the common man with the key technologies like 5g and we will certainly love to have you sir for uh, academia we are ready to welcome you with open arms even after 5 years we love to have your lectures in our institutions too thank you so much and it is really very tough i know as, uh, uh, as you know organizing programs it is very difficult to get it is not to flatter you it's very difficult to get a person like you uh, particularly in a uh, 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 asia pacific head of a uh, key player in telecommunication thanks to dr tenmoli who has brought brought dr somu in virtual mode to have a fruitful discussion we are grateful to you ma'am in a special manner all of us all of us sir with a grateful heart we remember you we acknowledge you we, we will never remember you and we will definitely collaborate with you in future too for our research thanks for sparing your time we know you are you are very busy out of your busy schedule you have you have spared Uh, around you know now uh, two hours sir we have spent two hours we might not we started around 420 uh, or so you connected at 420 now we we have spent two hours nearly with you thank you so much thank you so much for being with us thanks for sharing your expertise in uh, uh, telecommunication uh, particularly with 5g thank you so much sir so great thank you thank you, thank you, thank thank you, you thank so much thank you dear friends yeah, yeah. once again i just want to ore zoom yeah. time for us yeah. thank you ore or chinna or information share pannite like no again thank you for giving the opportunity tanmali uh, madam and thank you refund for listening to me ore or chinna information ninga dr vimal sonnad mari unga vai muhurtha na undu doctor kedaiyadhu na ore engineer da be in mba da but i am planning to do phd when i come to move to teaching i want to do phd as part of my thing unga vai muhurtha adu palikonu nambara seekrama okay thank you <laughs> thank you so much thank you enna oru doctor doctor nu solli irukkar oru thoorama solli irukkar thank you so much and i really appreciate again uh, thank you so much for uh, spending the time it's a very great uh, you know i really it's a pleasure for me and privilege for me to talking to the teaching community too i respect a lot okay thank okay you. thank you so much you, okay thank you. thank you sir it thank is you. very difficult to get a personality like you you know who is core to technology but with social concern very difficult no, to no, find no. a person like it's you it's okay really, i'm just really, really, i'm just can you share one minute about your environmental project okay, okay. Uh, Me. Okay. Her, uh... Maybe, maybe I'll tell you. See, one simple example I'll tell you. Tamil uh, person, it's an English person. Okay, I feel I want to connect with you people. Now, Chinnavai is like that. When they, enga ur learn, enga appa ma padi ka daunga. Enga vosai gal. Enga ur learn, but pa manar gudi engar da. When they 8 kilometer doro, kal la serpula ma naradu pova. Naradu po 8 padinaar kilometer or naalak narapa. முப்பத்தஞ்சு பைசாக்கு பஸ்ஸுக்கு டிக்கெட் இருக்காது எங்க அப்பா வந்து முப்பத்தஞ்சு பைசா டிக்கெட் டவுன் பஸ்ஸுக்கு டிக்கெட் எடுக்க காசு கொடுக்க மாட்டாரு பஸ் காசு இல்லைன்ட்டு பட் நான் கட்டடிக்க மாட்டேன் நடந்து போயிட்டு வருவேன் பட் செருப்பு இல்லாம போகல என்ன ஆகும்னா சில வாட்டி இந்த தார் ரோட்ல தார் உருகி காலில் ஒட்டிக்கும் ஸோ அதை போய் எங்கேயாச்சும் ஒரு புல்லுல தேய்ச்சிட்டு நடந்து போயிட்டு படிச்சு வந்தவனா So by by God's grace, I'm in a good position, right? I'm a US citizen, I travel all over the world. Uh, by God's grace, I have to thank God for that. But it is my social responsibility to give back to my community right so that is what i do i have a trust called padai uh, i can share some of the things with uh, you know padai and uh, last 20 years i been doing uh, education support for village students and uh, poor children and the last two years i am doing a lot of environmental projects for my villages 10 villages in my native place to restore the lakes uh, ponds and planting trees i have planted about 25000 trees in the last two years in my villages and uh, i'm doing whatever i can give back to the community that is what i'm doing so you know it's a small way i'm not a bill gates i'm not a big guy or anything but whatever i can do i contribute to the give back to the community okay thank you so much that is great to have such a man in our nation for india no it's it's a small back thing to it's a small back to india it's a small too. thing yeah i will i will come and do whatever <laughs> contribution okay? okay that's my my plan okay uh, thank you everyone. thank you ravi feeling very homely today thank you thank you everyone okay good night and take care stay good safe night. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Vimal, sir, thank you so much. Tanmali, ma'am, thank, thank you very much for uh, having brought such a person. Thank you very much. It uh, you know you have to be thanked. Uh,
for having brought the doctor uh, sorry uh, the okay personally i want to know how was the session sir normal i think he has left it was, it was wonderful madam seriously to be very frank even uh, the no, layman of technology will understand he was very simple to the core and okay. he was elaborating uh, you know evolution of technology particularly telecommunication from 1g to 5g and the key features of 5g and from there we could have you know some of the researchers are here uh, we could have uh, um, you know people could have got some key features to go in for this set. and he has also given insights to collaborate with the research industries particularly geo we have got through you many will uh, approach uh, you know many will approach you for getting into industry okay. for their uh, implementation I okay I'll, I'll, so, i'll give his uh, i'll give his phone number to you i think you can contact him and he's a good yeah, through, through you we will go man that will be better through you we will go yeah and really great of you madam that uh, you know we should have talks like this uh, if, if it is possible to have another talk with sir with core network uh, will it will also be good uh, yes, some sir, talks yes. rele relevant to we, we, we will invite we will invite him like yeah. when he is free we will will ask uh, so that okay. only researchers only people who do with the research with core network uh, okay. so they can have a discussion just discussion madam let him not give talk let us ask for clarification let him give discussion let it be like a debate Okay. So that it will be a I have I have one friend, Mr. Uh, Arul Bright. He is CEO of uh, Reliance Geo. Yeah, bring him, Madam. Uh, okay. uh, he is heading uh, Kerala, Andhra, and uh, Chennai. Yeah. Uh, he is also a batchmate, a friend of uh, Ravi. Yeah. I think yeah. we will meet him sometime. We will get connected to him sometime later. Yeah. And Femina, Madam, please, Ma'am. Thank yes, you so much for coming. Ma'am, yeah, I should thank you for giving me a, such an opportunity to, to listen a very nice informative session. Actually, I was on a travel, uh, so I missed the first part. I hope initial, so. Initial uh, yeah, initially I missed, but uh, as soon I uh, I could get in, I just got in. But uh, I had very informal uh, interaction with him, and uh, I, I, you just convey him if he come here, comes to India, settles as an academician. I'm very much interested in doing uh, collaborative research with him. Okay, ma'am. We, we will get him connected with LinkedIn. I think that oh. will be better. Uh, really, ma'am. Really. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you so much. And Saramal, uh, thank you for coming. Ten more, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me? Ten more now. Ah, if I'm not a nalla take this time. Ah, the internet problem, pa. Your internet bandwidth is low. Some information okay. I got. Okay. That's why so, 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 you are just just convey him that. Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, really, when session was very informative, highly informative. Okay. Because I, I'm not at all completely aware of five G and all. Now I got the key point. Okay. As Vimal Raj, uh, Vimal Jarad said. Ah. Um, now I know but something about five G. Ah, uh, five G. So, professor, a very young professional and energetic. Uh -huh. Covid nineteen period, he has become very famous all throughout the uh, oh. all many states. Oh. Okay. Congrats, Vimal Jara. Congrats. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you. I think Sasi A, a research scholar. Who is he? Sasi A. Sir, you got a student, uh, sir. Normal, sir. Madam. A uh, Sasi A, a research scholar, is going to come. Ah, I do not know, madam. We have got uh, Mr. George Gabriel Roy. Dr. George Gabriel okay. Roy from okay. Central okay. College. Okay. 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 Thank you. Madam, um, Madam, because of you, now today I have uh, heard Sorma Devi's Madam voice. So we couldn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she we cannot sorry, reach Madam. Uh, 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 internet. Madam, uh, always. What is the net connectivity? Uh, <laughs> in Bangalore, I, very... I didn't get. Uh, I mean, uh, proper internet connection, no. Okay, okay, Poor okay. internet connectivity. Uh, that, really, that's I why I'm very talking. bad. No, I couldn't interact with them. Really, yeah, I felt that's very why, bad. That's why okay. I'm thanking Ten Mori Madam uh, for giving me an opportunity to at least listen your voice. Anna, you see, the friends are chatting now. Are you? Sorry, sorry. No, <laughs> no madam, no madam. <laughs> yeah, okay, nice, nice, nice to hear your chat. And yeah, anybody yeah, else who yeah. wants to talk to me? Personally, you can talk. Thank you, Tain Murri. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us opportunity. No. <laughs> Thank you, Sharma. In the very first time, I am going to talk to you. Ah, 
participants dear participants for being with us for two hours almost two hours thank yeah. you thank you umal sir umal sir umal sir madam yes madam tell me madam uh, sir namme kind of zoom le record panirukringa illa illa youtube la mattum record panirukringa YouTube, YouTube matter the madam. Okay, okay. I think that will be good. Okay. Because Ravi personally wanted me to share that link to him today. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will. You can take it, madam. You can take the link from. Uh, you know, I will send it to you tonight. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, George, for uh, interacting, and I think it was an uh, engaging session. Thank you. Doctor George, are you there? Hello, sir. Yeah, he's there. He's there, madam. He's there. So, I shall end, madam. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, everybody.